where log data can be delivered in a variety of formats, including LAS and CSV files. However, if you end up with a CSV file and you want to convert it to a LAS file, there are a number of ways that you can do this. So if you want to see how to do this using the LASIO library, then keep on watching. Hi everyone, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. One of the issues that you may face when looking at well log data is the wide variety of formats that are available. Everything from LAS, DLIS, CSV, JSON and many other different formats. This can often become a headache when you're trying to work out which file to use in your workflow or when you come to creating a standard file for other users. One of the main formats you may have seen me discuss on this channel multiple times is the LAS file format. And LAS stands for Log ASCII Standard and it was developed in the 80s and 90s by the Canadian Well Logging Society as a way to standardise how well log data is stored and transferred between users. It is a simple ASCII file format with multiple sections stored within the file. First you have the header section, which contains information from the well itself, the location, the well name, field name, etc. And further down you may end up with parameters, which include parameters for processing and parameters that have been used by the field engineers. And then you have a curve information section, which stores information about the curves that are contained within this file, and that includes the name, the units and a description. And then further down in the file, the main part of the file, is where the data is stored. And it is this data that we are interested in when we are trying to understand the subsurface. These files are easy to open up in any text editor and you can view the contents as well as edit them if necessary. However, there may be occasions when you are given CSV files that contain well log data and these may not be easily readable by some software packages or you may want to convert it into a LAS file. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to use the excellent LASIO library to build a LAS file from a CSV file. So let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can do it. Here we are in our Jupyter Notebook and the first step as usual is to import the libraries that we're going to be working with. So first off we need to import two libraries for this particular notebook and these are LASIO and Pandas. And we can simply do that by typing import LASIO and import pandas as pd. Once we run that, we've got the libraries imported. Next, we need to load in our data from our CSV file. So that is simply done by creating a variable called data, and then we pass in pd.read underscore csv, and in the brackets we pass in the location of the file, and then we run that. So if we want to check what the data contains, we can then call upon data.head and run that. So we can see that we've got all of our logging curves in here, caliper, dt, dt log, dts, etc. And we've also got a depth column. And if we just want to be sure that we've got numeric values, we can then call upon data.info. Here we've got 17 measurements and a depth curve. So we've got a total of 18 columns within here. We can see that each of these columns contains numeric values. So we've got floating point values and we've also got an integer value here for a cold flag. So now let's move on to creating our last file object. So we need to call upon LASIO for this. So first off, I will create an, a variable called LAS underscore file, which we're going to store our last file in. And we'll set that equal to LASIO dot LAS, all capitals, and then a capital F, followed by lowercase i l e and then we use the open and close brackets so that now creates a simple last file that contains nothing in it and we can check that we've got nothing in this file by calling upon last underscore file and we call upon header which should return the last file header we can see that we've got all of the mnemonics for the header such as the wrap the stop depth the step, null values, company, well name, field name, location, etc. So we've got these all in here. We can see here in the value section, we've not got anything in these. We can also see that we've got no curve information and no parameter information. And to be sure we've no data within our file, we can call upon last underscore file dot curves. And we'll see that we get an empty list back. So that tells us that there, are, there is no data within this file. So let's begin making our metadata for the file. And this is adding information to the last header. So the first step I like to do is create a number of variables. And this just makes it easier to update in the future rather than going into the individual calls that we were going to be making and then changing the value. If we have them in variables, we can then pass them into a function and then those variables that are passed in can then be used to write out the data to our last file. So let's set up our well name which is going to be called random well. 
we will set up another one called field name and we will set that to random field and also we will pass in a uwi value which we will set to one two three four five six seven eight so now we've got these variables set up we can now start writing them to the header of our last file and we simply do this by calling up on our last file and then calling up on well and we select which field we're going to be editing so i'm going to edit the well field which is the well name and we're going to set that to lasio dot header item and i'm going to select well and then we're going to assign the value of that equal to well underscore name and now we will repeat this for our other variables for our field name and our uwi so we can come in here and call this fld and same here fld and we change the value from well name to field name and then same with the uwi And when we run that, we then have those values set in our last file. And we can just check that by calling upon the header again. So we can do that by last underscore file uh, dot header. And when we run that, when we look at the well name and the field name, we can see that we've now got our values in here, random well and random field. And the same with our UWI, which has now got a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these values are now in our header. To put our depth data in, we can do it one of two ways. So we can add these in manually by writing each line individually and then passing in the name and the values that we want saved to it. So we do that by simply calling lass underscore file dot add underscore curve. And our first curve is always going to be our depth curve. For with last files in the last year, we need to pass in DEPT for our depth. And we're going to set that equal to data depth and we're going to take the values from the depth column in the data frame and save these to the depth curve and we will also set the unit as equal to meters so that is our data now added to our file and we can simply check this by calling calling upon last file dot curves and when we do that we see that we've got one curve within our file now we can write this file out by simply calling upon last file dot write and then passing in our output location so here i've got an output folder and then a subfolder of notebook 22 which is 22 in this uh, series and then we have our last file name output last dot last so if i run that nothing will be returned but we can open our last file that we've just generated in that folder and then we can open that file in something like vs code or text editor or notepad and we can see that we've now got our well header information in here with our UWIs, our field names, and our well names. And we can also see that the start, stop, and step have populated with the correct values. You'll notice the step has not been rounded up or down, and this is something that you could do manually to fix it, but ensuring that the file is still readable and loadable into your package of choice. So if we scroll down here, we can see that on the left-hand side, We've got our individual depth values so we're going from 3500 meters all the way down to 4124.8 meters and if we go back to our data frame and scroll up we can see that we start at 3500 meters so our depth data is now in so now we can start adding in our other data as we want to assign units to our curves I've created this simple list here with each of the units for each of the curves that we've got within our data frame. So what we need to do is loop through each of the columns within the data frame. And we can do that just using a simple for loop in Python. So we're going to go for, we're going to write for column and unit in zip and data dot columns comma units. So this zip function is a special function for Python where we're going to combine multiple lists and loop through them at the same time. Now, as we already have depth in our file that we've set up here, we need to consider that when we're doing our for loop. However, if you were doing this normally, you may already have the depth curve and you may just want to do that as part of the for loop. But as we've already got it, I'm just going to show how we can handle that as part of some if logic. So if call is not equal to depth, then we're going to execute this code. 
and we're going to execute class underscore file dot add underscore curve and then we're going to pass in call which is our column name from our list data call so we're selecting the data from the data frame and then we're going to set the unit is equal to unit and that unit will be taken from the units list here so if we do come across depth within our list which is very likely then we're going to skip that and then move on to the next one so I can quickly run this cell so now that we've done that we can then just check that we've got all of the curves within our file so I can call upon last underscore file dot curves and when we run that we can see that we've got depth here and we've got the unit assigned to it of meters and if we go down to say gamma ray we've got the correct unit API set to here as well and we can see the shape of the data so we know how long or how many values are within each of the columns and as this is our last file then each of these columns should have the same length so we can now move on to exporting this data to a file by calling upon last underscore file dot write and then we pass in the output directory so if I run this our file is now generated and I can open it quickly in VS Code so once that file has been opened, we can then see that we've got the correct start and stop depths, which have been picked up automatically from the data. We can see that we've got a step value. However, you'll notice that there's a bit of a rounding issue here. So this is something that you would have to just double check when you're doing it with your own data and make sure that it is the correct step before loading it into your package of choice. We can see that we've got the, the header information for our, that we set earlier with a random well, random field, and the UWI value. Next, we have the curve information. So we could have expanded that for loop to include descriptions about what, what each of these curves are. In this case, I've just left them blank, and we, but we can see that we've got the Cali, which is set to inches, and then we've got DT, which is set to microseconds per foot, and so on. If we scroll further down, we can see that we've got values in each of our columns, which corresponds to each of the curves here. We've got our depth curve, our caliper curve, and if we go right to the end, where we've got our temperature, we can see that it is about 94.5 degrees C. So there we have our final product, where we've transitioned from a CSV file to a last file. And there are much more parameters that you can adjust within that last file, including the curve information section, as well as the processing and tool parameters, and any other information such as remarks. You can add these all in here by searching for the correct mnemonic within the well header, and then passing in the value for that. So next time you end up with a CSV file and you want to convert it to a last file, be sure to give the Lasio library a try. But wait, don't click off this video just yet. Be sure to check out these videos up here on my channel if you're interested in finding out more about well log data and Python. Also, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and also click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell and you will be notified when new videos are uploaded to this channel. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.